Hello, everybody. Welcome to, uh, well, we're calling it a sort of Sonic Talk special or how things work. And we're here with uh, Mr. Yoad Nevo, who's a regular guest on Sonic Talk, a highly accomplished uh, mix engineer, uh, also a Waves developer. And he's over in his studio in Nevo Sound, where he's going to show us a little bit about, uh, I think we're going to talk about noise reduction and how that works, right? Yeah, true. Um, noise reduction is something that we use uh, a lot, especially people who work in post-production, uh, but also during mix, I use it a lot. Um, you can use it in many creative ways as well, but I wanted to talk about how it actually works. Um, it's, not, it's nothing mysterious or kind of uh, magical. Basically what it is, it's if you think of the frequency spectrum, and then you divide it to let's say 16 if you if you remember like an audio spectrum analyzer frequency spectrum analyzer you have those bars those leds yeah and basically they measure the energy uh there's a filter bank of 16 frequent the, the spectrum is divided to 16 uh, frequency ranges and each led measures the energy on each one and yeah. then uh, now think of just putting a gate on each one. What will happen then is that the signal, the noise will be below the gate's threshold, but everything that is not noise, so everything that will kind of peek through, will be represented in the uh, those frequency bands as energy, and it will open that specific gate. Um, I want to show this by looking at a very, very basic noise reduction, which is not even called noise reduction. That's a logic. That's a very old logic plugin, which is called spectral gate, which is exactly what noise reduction is. Um, so if we, okay, we have a, a, an acoustic guitar track here. And now um, I'm going to listen to it through this spectral gate. So in the beginning, when the threshold is high, you will not hear anything. As, as I, and as I lower the threshold down, only the loudest frequency ranges will kind of open their uh, respective gates. So let's see how that sounds. Here we have 32 bins, so 32 frequency ranges or frequency split points, 31 split points, and each one is gated. Oh, that's interesting, get that sort of that's chattering. And what, you, and what you're hearing, those artifacts, are actually the, the gate on each band um, basically kind of flickering between open and closed and and when you get that on many frequencies in this case 32 then you get that kind of glassy uh, nasty sound which we all hate and this is a this is also present in some audio um, compression methods um, so let's see what happens if I add noise so here I have just pink noise and let's see what happens. You can hear some of it through because the mix on this plugin is not a hundred percent. So, so this is how it sounds on noise. Because what happens is the noise has random values mm. on every frequency all the time. So it kind of the gates go crazy and open and close, and that's why you get that that artifact. Now, if I add the guitar signal to that, a bit more so, interesting, almost it's yeah. more pleasing. Yeah, exactly. When it's when it's sorry, that's the guitar with the noise. So it's quite quite a lot of noise. Yeah. Now there's no noise, oh, although the sound has uh, deteriorated 
quite a bit. Now, when I go over a certain threshold, the noise gets um, activates the all the gates. Um, yeah, yeah. All the gates, so it comes through. Let's move to a, another one, which is a much more sophisticated noise reduction, uh, but it still works in the same way. This one also allows us to learn the noise. So let's say this is the noise in my recording. And let's say there's a, there's a bit of a rumble. And this is something that... So you're you know, creating artificial like a, noise at the moment, right? Yeah, it's, it's very loud as well. But you can see here that on the spectrum, I get that noise um, print, if you like. Um, so, so now I can learn that, and when I first learn and stop, you will see that this is now stored. Now, this plugin has um, thousands of bins, so the frequency spectrum is not divided to 32, but actually to 4096. So wow, each okay. one is a tiny bin that contains and if you get and if you actually let me try to to play to just show what one bin sounds like and uh, let's see if i can do that so that's one bin of 32 Right, okay, one band of, one, not, one very high Q sort of band, effectively, yeah? But you see, it's, it, because it's divided to only 32 bins, you can hear some of the other frequencies as well, because mm. it's not sharp enough. If, you would, if it would be possible to, to listen to individual bins on here, they would sound like needle kind of sharp mm. frequent sine waves, basically. Um, and then, so, so now this noise print is actually the threshold of the individual bins. So what it says is that a signal needs to be higher th at, at, at this frequency. It needs to be higher than this point in order for its um, to open, right. to, uh, respective gate to open. Um, and now what I can do is... The, you see that the threshold, this is my threshold. So I set it to just above the signal, the noise signal, and then I Bring increase in the amount the, of noise reduction, right, okay. Yeah, so now you can hear those artifacts, but they're a lot more subtle because they're spread across thousands of bins. Ah, okay, so they're, right. they're not as prominent. Uh, obviously, this is a lot of noise reduction. So I'm going to try to go with less. Let's bring in the guitar sound. And start increasing the amount of noise reduction. So we're still hearing a lot of artifacts, but just to remember, that this is the signal we're dealing with. So that's almost unusable. But if we go to a more kind of real life situation where we just have a very, very noisy guitar, then, then we can. And now we can listen to the difference so we can listen to only what we're taking off so we're mm. not taking too much of the sound if I increase then we'll start hearing the guitar yeah because we're taking the noise, some of the guitar that's, out right okay and that's what it will sound like because that's what we lost so I've got a question. I mean, using the kind of, uh, we're used to using noise gates in terms of kind of maybe noise reduction, maybe isolating a tom or a drum from spill from other microphones. I mean, do we get the same level of control like we do of the envelope and the attack and the decay and all of those sort of things? Not, not quite, not quite. We set them uh, to a certain um, 
to a certain amount, to, to kind of a sweet spot, but we have an attack and decay controls, which are essentially what, 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 you, what you're saying. Um, and, and, and this is all is for, for trying to make it as natural as possible. Mm. Um, let's, let's listen to this example. It's very, very noisy. This is like, if I would get something like that to mix, I would say that this is unusable because unless it was meant to be, it's a kind of a lo-fi thing and all that. But yeah. if it was a proper guitar recording, I would, I would reject something like that because you can see if it was more something like that, then we can kind of get rid of it. But you can still hear that the transients get smeared because this is an this this works on an F, FFT. Um, these are FFT bins, and we, which work in the time domain, which means that they each need a certain time window in order to get the frequency. Well, the full, I suppose the full cycle of a waveform has to fit through; otherwise, it'll be cut exactly. off. Exactly. Right? Exactly, and and that creates the the smearing of the transients. So what we we can also do here is artificially enhance the transients. So make them louder and then bring them down after the process. Ah, so, okay. and this works in, in a similar way to, to old Dolby noise reductions, not in terms of transients, but in Dolby, you would, you would have the encoder, which will basically raise the, the high frequency a lot and then bring it down on the decoding part of it, like on Dolby cassettes and tapes and things like that. It will bring it down together with the noise. Um, right, so you, the overall effect is sort of back to some sort of normality, but it enhances it in the first place. Exactly. So we're doing, we, we're doing it here with transients, and let's see what that sounds like. So, so I'm hearing more transients, and this is almost... Maybe it's a little bit too much, but still, the amount of noise we're taking out. This is without noise reduction. Uh, also, we can oh, we can be more gentle, so we can basically tilt the threshold of these gates. So with with this, you can see that now I'm making the highs more sen more sensitive, ah, okay. and now I'm making them less sensitive. So if I don't mind the the noise in the lows, for instance, you know this is less audible or less noticeable. Then I can lower the threshold, um, thus eliminating some of the artifacts and letting the highs be heavily gated. Let's see what that sounds like. And that's the difference. So I'm nearly not taking anything from mm. the actual guitar. So yeah, this is this is sort of technology is not common to just the waves thing. This is the sort of thing that you would find in most noise reduction, like the isotope stuff and that kind of thing. Uh, one thing I noticed, um, you're calling mm -hmm. were you calling them beans? Is that what each individual slice of audio frequency is called? That's what they are. What what they are, and if you listen to them, they're basically sine waves. You can you can compare it to additive synthesis. So basically, additive synthesis is using beans or harmonics, and you just shape the waveform according to that. To to that. So here we have the the signal being um, trans transformed into beans, into the separate beans. In this case, there's mm -hmm. over. 4,000 of them, and each individual one, individual one has a gate on it, and that's how we, that's how noise reduction works, basically. Um, so are there any uh, kind of creative uses you might use this for, you know, rather than just uh, restoration? Would you use this in a creative way? Yeah, I mean, I mean, let's say, let's go back to this really noisy thing here, and if we use the attack and decay, so if we exaggerate this, let's listen to this. And then I use the release. I can 
almost get kind of a reverb you know because the noise opens only on the peaks and then I give it a kind of a decay something like that if I want to exaggerate it I can create That's really interesting. interesting sounds also using the attack the transients here go I need to not use the transients in this mode yeah you know this going through a reverb or something like that and you get something which you can't get otherwise because it sounds very very processed and almost not acoustic anymore you know yeah. there's something kind of metallic or glassy about it thank you that's really interesting i honestly didn't know it was a gate on each one i thought it was actually a filter but i suppose a gate is a kind of uh full frequency filter i mean it just reduces everything at the same time absolutely usually usually we we used to thinking about broad when we talk about gate or stick a gate on the snare or something like that you talk about broadband gate which means there's it, it's basically a vca thing so it lowers the whole or cuts the whole frequency range in one go here it does the same thing but it divides it to those bins and then gates each one separately and that allows you the feature to to learn the 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 noise print uh, and which basically sets the threshold for each gate. Well, Yoed, thanks again for explaining that. Uh, like I say, I did not know that in any way whatsoever. So now we know. Yes, indeed. So uh, <laughs> that's it. Thank you very much for watching, everybody. This has been uh, a kind of Sonic Talk How It Works special with Mr. Yoad Nevo. Uh, thank you again for watching, as I say. We'll see you all uh, on the other side. And don't forget, uh, stay clean, stay isolated, and do all the things that you need to do so everybody can get through this together. See you next time.